Welcome to the Bet MGM studio for another edition of Titans Football with Brian Callahan, presented by Seat Geek. I'm Mike Keith, joined as always by Titans head coach Brian Callahan. Monday press conference, a lot to discuss after falling in Detroit, one of the areas you hit hard, special teams and the work to fix it. Done a lot of things already in the first 48 hours after the game to go at it, taking apart every aspect, trying to get it straight. Yeah, we have to. Uh, you can't give up return yards the way we did in a game and, and hope to be in it, particularly against one of the contending teams at their place. And uh, have to find some solutions to fix it, make it better, whatever it takes. However we got to do it, um, we'll find a way to get it done. All right, let's get to Callahan on as we talk to the head coach about a variety of topics. First off, Tony Pollard in the Titans run game. Pollard continues to produce solidly at 94 yards on Sunday. Good to have him. Do you expect to have his partner, Tajay Spears, back for Sunday's game against New England to help Tony out? Yeah, we're hopeful that Tajay makes it back, but uh, Tony has just been such a tremendous addition. Um, in the run game, in the pass game, his production with the ball in his hand is, has been fantastic. And I mean, even that big screen got called back on a, on a hold, but just continues to make huge plays for us um, and provide a uh, steady veteran leadership on top of it. And again, hopefully get Tajay back to maybe lighten the load on him some. He's had to play a lot. All right, Calvin Ridley got it going in the Motor City. 10 catches, 143 yards. How do you get more out of Ridley like that? And the second part of the question is, do you hope that Will Levis could be throwing him the ball on Sunday? Yeah, I think we finally got to see uh, the Calvin Ridley that we, we had hoped to see. He made plays down the field, made explosive plays, uh, made big plays on the ball when it was near him. Um, just a really impressive performance and one that we have to continue. And, and yeah, we'll see where Will is at this week. And um, there's there's a chance that, that he may be ready to roll. Um, but again, we'll, we'll see as the practice week begins on Wednesday. Finally, the Titans pass rush looked uh, really the best it has in several weeks. Four total quarterback sacks. Arden Key, two in the ball game, and that gives him three in two weeks. What is the pass rush doing better, and how has Arden Key gotten so high? Uh, just Arden's been fantastic, especially uh, last uh, at the game. I mean, just the, the effort off the edge, the energy, uh, being able to go win the one-on-ones, that's what we, we hadn't done enough of, is when getting the chance to go win one-on-one, -on -one, he won. Um, found ways to get to the quarterback and affect the passer. And uh, the pass rushers really start, starting to step up. They've kind of found a groove. And again, I think that's one of the best fronts in football right now in the Detroit Lions. And uh, we found a way to be really disruptive against the run game and uh, disrupt their timing in the passing game by getting after the quarterback. Lions finished the game with just 225 yards of total offense. Jeffrey Simmons making a good play there. I want to go back to Calvin Ridley next. Uh, Calvin Ridley, big game caught a deep ball that was really pretty. We'll go to the Titans tape when we return and take a look at how that deep pass unfolded to number zero when Titans football with Brian Callahan returned. Stay with us. Glad to have you with us back in the Bet MGM studio as Titans football with Brian Callahan presented by SeatGeek rolls on with the tape. Get it? Thanks, Coach. Time now for Titans tape. And this is going to be one of Calvin Ridley's 10 catches in the game in the Motor City. The longest went for 47 yards. It was a thing of beauty. Brian, if you would, show us how the play unfolded. Yeah, so this is a very a pretty basic concept for the most part. But what really makes this play is, is we put Calvin uh, inside in the slot and Tyler Boyd outside. Uh, but with this motion, this is a, a, a timely uh, motion where he's moving full speed at the snap. And so really what ends up happening is on the snap, they switch spots. But what that does is it allows us uh, to get Calvin matched up in this. They play this man coverage where they drop this safety in the play. We call it lurk coverage, but it's a single high man. But it allows us to get Calvin matched up on a mismatch there, which is I mean, Robinson, their nickel. And so we were trying to get this matchup and the route is is pretty simple when you, when you look at the whole picture, but just take a look at the motion first. All right, so now they lock the players when they go in motion. And this is just a simple sale concept that we call it. Uh, it's pretty generic in terms of the, the, the name of the, of the play. But Calvin's on this, on this route that we call a blazer, and he runs this thing right down the numbers, and the quarterback has the ability to bleed him inside. It's sort of like a very skinny post route. 
Tyler's on his motion now running what we call a sail route uh, to the to the sideline. We have a little bit of edge help on the right side. He's in the flat. We have chip help by the back. He sits here and then on the back side we have a in cut uh, that just kind of completes it. So it's sort of a one, two, three read to the back side with great help. First things first, great protection. There is nobody near Mason. He throws this ball with great timing and anticipation off of uh, one hitch and puts it right in stride. Doesn't even have to move. Uh, ball is completed right in front of him and it's uh, an explosive play for us and a really nice job. So you just look here at the protection as well and you look at Mason's timing. One hitch and the ball is up and when we talk about a hitch you just see this quick bounce he takes and the ball is gone and it's perfectly placed right down the numbers uh, right in stride to Calvin as we get the mismatch on the nickel with Calvin inside. Am I correct in saying that Tyler Boyd is really open on this too if he had chosen him? There's no question. They're both, they are both uh, equally open. Uh, you can see here from the, from the wide view uh, as you see Tyler break, break leverage uh, versus this man coverage right here on the sail route. And he gets a chance there. That ball was in the air. That's certainly an open route in the NFL. But Calvin was too too uh, too open to pass up. And and again, these what ends up happening here is the safety's on this backside hash, and this one's dropping in inside. And so now that provides us a a window away from this backside safety to complete that ball down the field. So, so it's a it's a safe throw too. An inc incredibly safe throw, which is mm -hmm. uh, not always the case when you're throwing the ball down the field versus single high. But um, that that's what ended up happening. And again, Mason. Calm, poised, easy delivery, um, really accurate throw. For somebody like me who doesn't know anything about it, it would feel like if Calvin Ridley starts getting hit with deep balls, if you start getting the ball down the field to him, that would feel like it's going to help your entire passing game in terms of teams not being able to bunch up as much. Yeah, it's, it's, part, of, it's part of how offense works. If we can find ways to get down the field and create explosives, which I think we had, Eight explosives in the game. Uh, that's, well, I think that's the most we've had this year so far against a really good contending style defense. Uh, it's going to allow people to see that we have the ability to threaten down the field and, and hopefully open up some more of the things uh, underneath and, and in the space of the middle of the field as we threaten the, the defense vertically. Were you pleased overall with your pass protection on the day? I was. I thought, I thought pass protection looked, looked like this for most. Now we got help on both sides here. Um, but again, the, the pocket is firm. Um, you know, that that's... That's good football. If we if it looks like this, uh, we got guys winning, anchoring, and we got we got everybody accounted for, and there's nobody in the quarterback's lap uh, allows us to make these throws down the field. It's good stuff right there, Coach. Thanks for showing it to us. You got it. We've got more coming up as we have film study every week on this edition of Titans Football with Brian Callahan. And speaking of technology, the Titans and Verizon partnered to bring technology labs to two community centers in Nashville. That genuine story after the break. Titans football with Brian Callahan continues from the Bet MGM studio. Verizon and the Tennessee Titans have joined forces to give back to the Nashville community in a big way through the opening of two new tech labs at both the McFerrin Park and Coleman Park Community Centers. Last week's official ribbon-cutting ceremony at McFerrin Park is this week's Epic Western Genuine Article. Today we are here at McFerrin Park Community Center, which is in the heart of East Nashville, and we are dedicating our second technology lab thanks to the NFL Foundation and Verizon Wireless. Three. excitement, beyond excitement, uh, understatement. Seeing their faces, uh, them just barrel through that door to go in. Sometimes it's hard for kids to be able to come in or, or get access to computers or not have them at home. The importance of connectivity uh, and the internet and being able for these kids to be able to connect uh, while they're here at the community center. There are so many communities who do not have access to it or have limited access. One community is based on community partnership. We are great neighbors, that we care about our community, and that together we're stronger.
days like this remind me that there's a generation that is just yearning for these opportunities and it's up to us as the adults to make that happen for them. What the Tennessee Titans do is more than just what happens on the field. And with great partnerships like Verizon, we have the opportunity to make a difference. And Brian, as you see those young people, you're thinking about homework that's going to get done, maybe job opportunities, maybe college opportunities, some gaming. Nothing wrong, sure. with, nothing wrong with a little gaming, <laughs> but sure. that just warms your heart to see those kids get a chance to have that technology at their fingertips. Yeah, and you just you realize how fortunate a lot of us are and that there's some communities that don't have the access that we do to the, the, the Internet, the technology to be, able to, to be able to function in today's work world, too. And so just to get them an opportunity to see that and have that at their fingertips is, is really fantastic. And to have them at a place uh, like McFerrin Park Community Center with their friends and all of the people from Metro Parks who take such good care of them. That's, uh, that's fantastic stuff. After the break, another really good story. The Tennessee Titans recently granted a wish to a T-Rack fan. That's right. More Titans football with Brian Callahan up next. Make-A-Wish Middle Tennessee has made many, many wishes come true over the years, and sometimes that includes calling on the Tennessee Titans to help. Recently, it was a young boy's wish to meet Titans mascot T-Rack, and the experience did not disappoint, as you'll see in this week's Seat Geek Sound. Titan organization, got a surprise for you. Turn around. Turn around, we got a surprise for you. They say surprise wish, your wish is to be granted. For the coast game, you're gonna be T Rat Jr. So this has been a fun wish to watch because everything was magical from the beginning. And I said at first it was humbling that of all the people he could meet, he chose T Rat. So T Rack went to his home and told him he could come to training camp. We have a special surprise for you. So we decided that we would love for you to come out to training camp this week. You get to come to training camp as T Rack's special guest. And he got to go to training camp. That's you. That's him. My favorite player. T Rack. Oh, T Rack. <laughs> yeah. Then today he's going to be T Rack Junior. Welcome. We're going to go straight to the field to start. What do you say? Thank you. You're welcome. Where's T Rack at? For dinner. You're not going to do it, Bob. There he is! Yeah. Was this the mask? When it came around for the Make-A-Wish, it was kind of obvious what he was going to choose. He could have went to Disneyland, he could have had a backyard oasis, he could have had anything in the entire world. Make-A-Wish was great for that, but he ultimately chose to hang out with T-Rex. Are we going to come out? Uh, no, 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 no. Joining T-Rex today, we have a very special guest. Please welcome Titans fan, Carson! Uh, yeah! This is Carson here, T-Rag Jr. Can you give me a big tighten up, Carson? Tighten up! Yeah, that's what we like to hear! We are grateful for the partnership with the Titans. They are amazing wish granters. And at every turn, they make things special for each individual child. So today, making Carson's wish come true to meet T-Rag is a first for us. I feel like this experience is really just so meaningful to Carson and he's just, he's gonna remember for this entire life. For me as mom, I just, I love it. I mean, I would give my son the world. So something that not everyone can experience and my son gets to do it, I just, I love it. And I'll be crying a lot. Wow. That hits you in the heart, right? Sure as does. a parent, oh, that man. story is uh, really something else. Beth Torres, and the people at Make-A-Wish do an amazing job. And I met Carson at training camp. Yeah. And it was really exciting to meet him. And I couldn't get over then how much he wanted to be with T-Rack. Could have been with players, yeah. could have done, but he <laughs> wanted to be with T-Rack and boy, T-Rack came through big for him as he got to be T-Rack Jr. that day. Talk about talk about delivering. I mean, that was, that was really cool. I, I've never seen a, a kid be so excited to, want to be around the mascot like that. 
that was uh, that was really really cool and great job by them making that happen. What an un unbelievable day that must have been for them and their family. And uh, again, as a, as a father with young kids, you you see uh, that that magic that that must create for them, and that's uh, that was really cool to watch. When you think about it, in two nights, all the kids dressing up for Halloween, and there's Carson dressing up his T Rack <laughs> to have his wish come true from Make a Wish. Uh, that's a good story. Wonderful job by our folks pulling that together and sharing that with you on Titans Football with Brian Callahan. We're back with more after this. Callahan's first look presented by Nissan. This year, the New England Patriots are two and six under their first year head coach. Gerard Mayo, they're coming off a win over the Jets. Their young quarterback, Drake May, suffered a concussion in the game against the Jets, so he is in the protocol right now. Their backup is Jacoby Brissett, who it feels like has been in this league since the late 1960s. He's played forever. But it's another week, Brian Callahan, where you don't know who the other team's quarterback is going to be. It seems like You've had about six of these. Yeah, I think that's what where the league is right now. Uh, that's how these things are going. But they got a young player that they drafted highly and think highly of. And then uh, Jacoby's been doing it for a long time. And, and he's very capable. Uh, he, he's a veteran quarterback. He sees it. He can get the ball out. He's, he's, a, he's a proven commodity in this league. And I'm, I'm sure they're happy to have him as well to help fill in. He's a pro. Absolutely. You know, that's the thing about Jacoby Brissett is if he's going to start, he's ready. If he's a backup, he's ready. He can make the throws. He's just there to do the job. And uh, you really respect that type of player, much like Mason Rudolph has been stepping in the last two games for you. Yeah, very similar. And just those guys that have played and they understand how to play and know what the role is and how to prepare for it. Uh, you can tell Jacoby is, is a pro's pro. And every time he steps out there, he's prepared and does a good job. Tight end Hunter Henry has been a bright spot for the Patriots. More than 350 yards receiving this season. All right, let's talk about how your team matches up with this big tight end, Coach. You know, we, we saw we saw some good tight ends last week. Uh, we've seen a few over the course of the season, and um, yeah, he's he's productive. They find ways to get him the ball. Uh, he knows he knows how to play the position. He knows how to make plays in the ball. So we have to do a good job of accounting for uh, where he's at in the formation, the routes they like to run him on, and, and how we can be in position to best defend him. On defense, second-year defensive end Keon White leads the team with four sacks and two forced fumbles. Had a chance to spend time with him at the Senior Bowl a couple years ago. That guy is heavy. How do you keep him away from your quarterback? Yeah, it just uh, you got to match the physicality. Uh, it's a physical defense. It's a physical mindset for them on defense. They, they uh, have always historically done a good job. And obviously with, with Gerard Mayo there, they have a lot of remnants of the same things they've been doing for a long time. And uh, he's just one of the, the next in line of a lot of guys that look and feel the same as him. Um, and they play at a high level and they play hard um, and they're physical and they make life life hard for you on offense. Played a good game against a very physical Jets team taking a 25 to 22 victory. That's Callahan's first look. Good to be home this week and have yes. a chance to play November football at Nissan Stadium. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Talk to me a little bit about what your team's preparation is going to be like this week as you get ready to take on a team like the Patriots. Um, really, our, our process won't change a whole lot. Um, we got to make sure we focus on taking care of our job first, which is uh, the things that have allowed us to uh, get, ha uh, lose some games. And that's uh, the details and our habits and how we go about the business of the week and um, really got to do a better job of tightening down some of our, our eye discipline um, and then, again, some of the things in the special teams to, to keep us in position to win. New man on the roster, Cedric Gray, rookie linebacker, fourth-round pick out yep. of North Carolina. Could he see some action this weekend? Yeah, we'll see. He's, he's been practicing for the last couple weeks uh, as, as that window opened, and now he's, it's time to put him on a roster and uh, see where he can help us. All right. So the Titans going to be taking on the New England Patriots on Sunday. First of all, remember to set your clocks back an hour on Saturday ah. for daylight savings time. So Good reminder. <laughs> let's see. You're spring forward, fall, fall back. Fall back. Get a little we up. get to sleep an extra hour. I could use it. I, just, I bet you could. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to miss our broadcast, so you need to set your clocks properly. Our coverage begins with Titans Countdown at 11 a.m. That's Central Time. You can hear it in Nashville on 104.5 The Zone. Kickoff is set for 12.02. 
Titans Patriots this Sunday on Titans Radio. Excited to be back at Nissan Stadium. Excited to have you all there for this matchup against one of the original AFL teams, just like our franchise, the New England Patriots. For Coach Brian Callahan, I'm Mike Keith. Thanks so much for joining us, and we'll see you next week.